Welcome to the office corner with H.P. Campbell. Show is packed with news, author interviews, and specials all about you, the author. And now here's our host, H.P. Campbell. Welcome to the Office Corner with H.D. Campbell, and as always, I'm your host, H.D. Campbell. I want to start by saying a few changes have come to H.D. Campbell Productions. Besides hiring a new production assistant, I've hired two new voiceover people. So let me take a moment to give an Office Corner shout out to Quentin Thomas, my new production assistant, Amari Johnson, my new show voiceover artist, and Courtney Jones, my new commercial voiceover artist. You'll be hearing from all of them in the near future. In fact, Almora is the voice you heard in our new Arthur's Corner Open. Finally, a book update. My new novel, Geraldine, The How to Lose a Black Woman sequel, is making its final run through and will be out here in a few weeks. Stay tuned for dates. We'll be right back with our first author. Coming up next, author entrepreneur Lyman A. Montgomery. Have you checked out the Author's Corner lately? It's the best show you're not watching. Every two weeks, we bring you author interviews, news, and the best of the industry. With special guests, it's no wonder it's the fastest growing show around. There are two ways to check me out. Log on to my website at www.hdcampbell3.net or my YouTube channel at hdcampbell1230. And as always, let your writing fuel your spirit. Relationship issues or questions about loving yourself? Check out my newest columnist, Sharitha Newsom. Her column provides tell it like it is advice from a personal perspective. Get to know Sharitha Newsom on my HD Insider page website at www.hdcampbell3.net. And as always, let your writing fuel your spirit. Do you need a manuscript edited? Perhaps you need a press kit or some ghostwriting done. HD Camera Productions will offer the most professional services at the best price. We also do book trailers, publicity, newsletters, and more. Check out more in the online marketplace section on my website at www.hdcampbell3.net. And as always, let your writing fuel your spirit. Welcome back to the Office Corner with HD Campbell. Welcome back. My first author is also an entrepreneur as well as a motivator. Despite technical glitches in the interview, I learned a lot, and you will too. So without further ado, here's Lyman A. Murray. First, I just want to ask, how are you doing this morning? Hey, doing great. A pleasure to be on your show. All right. Um, before I get into what all you do, professional speaker, author, business coach, everything, Tell me what got you started in in all that. What 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 did you start with from the beginning? Sure. Well, what happened was I was one of those kids that didn't know exactly what it was I wanted to do until fifth grade. In fifth grade, we went to a nursing home called King Tree Nursing Home and met a gentleman who was the administrator by the name of Mr. Rankin. And Mr. Rankin gave me some advice that I never forgot. He said, in order to be successful, you need three things. Number one, you have to have a plan for success. Number two, surround yourself with people who want to be successful. And third, go to a school that will help you to be successful. And I made up my mind in fifth grade that I wanted to be successful. And I was sort of like the kid that from that day forward, from fifth grade, I always in college wore a shirt and tie to mm. school every day, uh, carried a briefcase, read three newspapers, and started on this quest of what it meant to be successful. Uh, got accepted to a full for the full scholarship to Ohio University. Uh, graduated from there with good grades. Got accepted to graduate school and started my career. How I ended up in human resources because my thought was I wanted to be a hospital administrator. Until my senior year, I took a industrial relations course that now we would call human uh, resources. And I said, Oh my God, I missed my call. And this is what I wanted to do. And I had an opportunity several years later after graduating uh, from graduate school to work as an HR uh, manager at a retail store. And I fell in love with it. And that led to uh, doing speeches, uh, some talks on business, human resources. And people come up to me and say, you have such a natural ability to speak. I didn't think I did. You know, I was a kid that took 
speech therapy for several years from the time I was in second grade all the way up to fourth grade. I was in speech therapy. So I didn't think I had the capacity to speak, let alone that people would pay me. And so after I had finished uh, graduate school, I got an invitation from a friend of mine to do a talk on Black History Month. And I just asked, I said, well, I'm just curious, is this for free or for pay? She said, no, it's for pay. She said, we don't have a lot of money, but we would love to have you. I said, well, what, how much? She said, $5,000. <laughs> 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 a lot of money. <laughs> and I, and I said, are you going to pay me $5,000 to do a 45-minute speech? I said, why? <laughs> so that launched me to the speaking business. Uh, how I ended up in the coaching business is people would contact me, and they would ask me, uh, Mr. Montgomery, I'm thinking about starting a business. What are your thoughts? What are your ideas? And I would say, well, send me your business plan. I would look over it. And I had made a lot of mistakes when I started my first uh, consulting company. And my first company that I launched actually was showing people how to raise money. So I would go out and write grants. I was a grant writer. I had worked in development, writing million dollars worth of grants for nonprofits. So I said, hmm, what would happen if I took this skill set of financial development and proposal writing and offered it as a service to small businesses to show them how to get funding, how to become a minority enterprise, uh, accredited business through their county office or the state. And I started getting a lot of requests. And a friend of mine said, well, Lyman, you need to start charging for your service. I'm giving away all this stuff free. And again, I said, well, who would want to pay for this? And I was surprised. He said, do me a favor, start charging to meet with people. And I just kind of threw out a number out there. I said, okay, $75. You would be surprised the number of people that paid $75 for one hour to share an idea with me. And that kind of launched me into the success coaching. And about two years ago, um, I decided to bring all of these different skills that under one umbrella, and that's what launched the Lionel Montgomery Success Network. And in that, of course, we launched the best and best of the book, Shattered Mask, Seven Masks that we wear. So that's kind of like my uh, trajectory into the speaking business, into the coaching business, into the business development business. I like how that I like how that all meshes together. Now, before I get into what your organization done and has done, let's talk about your book, Shattered Mask, for a second. Yes. Uh, give me a little bit of summary on that. The summary of the book details my life experience as a child survivor of sexual abuse at the hand of a teacher who was also a personal close friend of the family. This was an individual who was a scoutmaster. He was head of the neighborhood watch. Uh, he was voted uh, teacher of the year three times in the row. And he owned a, a huge mansion and kids was always over his house. And one night I had asked my parents if I could go out on neighborhood walk fire patrol. My parents were kind of apprehensive. They said, well, who would be there? So my parents did all the due diligence. They contacted the police and they said, no, this is a nice guy. You know, he would take kids actually down to the county jail to participate in sort of the scary straight program. Oh. And the night that my parents allowed me to go on patrol uh, and to have a sleep with uncle scout leaders and a sleepover of other kids there, uh, I remember being tired and asking for some milk, uh, some warm milk. And said he brought me some water. It was kind of cloudy. And after I drank the water, I remember feeling as I was falling into a deep hole. I don't know if he slipped something in my drink. I, I can't. But I remember waking up at 2:35 a.m. and that number, that time, registered in my mind for many years because I turned over and I looked at the clock and it was 2:35 a.m. And that's when the sexual molestation started, not just with the chief, but there were also uh, two other teenage boys that participated in my child rape. And I remember feeling so much shame and dirty and feeling as if my whole life had altered, had been altered by this life event that I vowed never to share with anyone. And as a result of not sharing this, I entered into a number of dysfunctional relationships. And so the book pretty much chronicles that 
It also provides strategies on how to shatter those masks. And I talk about seven masks, and I give you two. Uh, first, I talk about the mask of silence. All of us have heard what goes on in the house stays in the house. Mm -hmm. The problem is the house is on fire and no one is saying anything. The second mask I talk about is the mask of accomplishment, especially for men. We feel that we have to accumulate accolades of war. We have to be the man on campus, the man about time, the big mm -hmm. dog, you know, the fat cat. And all of this is an outward show. On the inside, we're really struggling and down the inside. And so I provide strategies to help people shatter those masks. And I always say this in the book. I say there's three things the book will do. Number one, help you identify your own mask. Second, provide strategies to help you shatter those masks. And third, to help you help someone else identify their mask and shatter theirs. So that's it in sort of a nutshell what the book is about. Okay. Um, my next question, you may have already answered it, but um, as a follow-up, why do you think we wear masks? I believe we're fascinated with masks. Um, growing up, you look at some of the cartoon characters. Uh, I was always, you know, I was not one who liked Superman, because I could never understand how come they couldn't tell that Clark Kent was Superman. They had on some glasses. Exactly you know? right. Uh, I like Spider-Man and Green Lantern. Uh, people that hid their identity behind masks because the truth of the matter, we really don't like who we are. And so that's why if you if you ever go to a shopping center and you're standing in line because the line is too long, you pick up a tabloid and you might see a cover that says, look at so-and-so without her makeup. And you go, gee, I didn't know she looked at that. <laughs> you know, I didn't know she looked at everything else. So I think as a society, we are fascinated with alter egos, alter personalities. And, and I felt if, if people really knew the real Lyman, they wouldn't like Lyman. So I became Lyman the preacher, Lyman the business coach. Uh, so people knew me at different levels, but they never really got a chance to know Lyman the person. Well, I'll tell you what, well, so far, like I say, live in the person is pretty cool. I'm, I'm enjoying the interview, so, so you're, so, like so. Well. Well, that's <laughs> well, that actually comes to my next question. Um, well, you just mentioned we all want to be the man, the big man on campus. The, how do you, I guess as a life coach, instill pride in someone without them having the ego? Yes. So, but but how do you do that? How, how, how would you be able to do that? Sure. There, there are three things, I think, when it comes to life coaching that you have to be willing to, number one, to assess the individual and make sure that that person is a candidate that is willing to do what is necessary to be successful. It's like the old adage, you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make that horse drink it. When a person contacts me for my coaching service, the first question I ask them is this, how serious are you about changing the negative behaviors that have led you to this point in your life that caused you to seek out help? If a person is, I'm okay, you know, my wife told me I need help, so I'm doing it to appease my wife or my spouse, or they're doing it for some other reason, you know, my boss told me if I didn't get help, I'm going to lose my job. This is going to be short term. But when that person, as grandma would say, gets sick and tired <laughs> of being sick and tired, we now have a baseline where we can start from. The second point, once they say, you know what, I'm tired of these negative thoughts, these negative behaviors that I continue to display. The second question, part of the assessment that I would ask them is, what message is loudest in your mind. Number one, how do you feel about you? When you're all by yourself and you ask this question, who am I? Can you answer that question? And eight out of 10 times, most people say like I said, when I was in that state, I really don't know who I am. I have parts of me that I understand that people have said this is who I am, but really I don't know who I am. And the third part is saying, okay, this is what it's going to take, and we map out a plan to help them, number one, and we have three components in our coaching. The first is personal development. 
finding out who you are. Let's work on you. Let's develop you as an individual. Let's reintroduce you to you and find out the greatness that lies within you. Second is your professional development. Because you cannot separate your personal self from your professional self. So we're talking about your personal brand and your professional brand. And once we work on, maybe you uh, uh, have some negative thought patterns at work. Maybe you have a boss you just don't like. Maybe that coworker rubs you the wrong way. I will begin to give you strategies and we come up with solutions how to deal with negative influences in our lives. And the third is community. None of us live on an island by ourselves. We have to interact within a community. And I define community as your family, your religious or faith-based community, your fraternal or sorority or civic organization. All of this makes up your community. So rather than splintering a person, then we're just going to focus on your pro 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 professional self and not your personal self because as an HR professional for over 20-something years, Majority of the people I had to discipline or let go, it was because they allowed their personal issues to impact their professional work. And I'm sure you've seen that as well. Mm -hmm. And if a person is not tied to a community, matter of fact, if you watch any type of uh, courtroom show, when a person's up for bail, the first thing that attorney is say, well, he's not a flight risk because he's connected to what? A community. Mm -hmm. He has roots in the community. And so that's sort of like our coaching philosophy, what we call the three pillars of successful uh, coaching, personal development, professional development, and community development. Okay. Now you say uh, you uh, you're, you see you work in HR. Where exactly um, are you? Do you do you, are you are you a speaker or do you just work for a company? Or? Yes, what I am uh, actually, I just accepted a new position at Indiana University as the um, what's known as a consulting position there. Well, I would be helping them uh, revamp their personnel policy, mm. uh, dealing with grievances. And so I have a long-term contract. Knock on wood, I just signed the other day, so I'm glad it will start in March, uh, where I will go in and work with their HR department to revise their handbook, deal with grievances, uh, and deal with what's known as employee relations issues as a consultant. Okay. Well, in relation, I'm going to go over to your website here for a second. Um, okay. In relation to uh, all that you do, um, do you, um, I guess when you come in, um, you say you're going to redo that handbook. Are you going to hold like personnel meetings with HR and explain to them yes. what's going on? And Yes, I will meet with the decision makers. I will also sit down with the uh, persons who actually doing the work offer my professional opinion on what should go in the handbook, what they should take out. As you know, Indiana University is a big ten school. They have over 40,000 students, over 15,000 plus employees. And Indiana University stretches across three campuses. There's a campus in Gary, Indiana, Indianapolis, and also Bloomington, Indiana. So. It's a big project, and I'm glad that they chose my company to undertake uh, to work not just with the Bloomington campus, but also the Indianapolis campus, as well as the Gary, Indiana campus, and also working with a number of other schools as well. Um, I'm still doing the, the life coaching, the executive coaching, uh, and what we found out through the use of technology. And what Lyman Grammar Success Network prides itself on, we're able to bring the best of the best uh, thought uh, changers, uh, change agents, consultants, coaches from all different walks of life, different spectrums, that they can provide a service to our client base based on what the client needs. And we've been very successful in doing that. Well, actually, you actually went into my next question. I was going to tell you, I was going to ask you to, to give me a little bit of detail about the Lyman Montgomery Success Network. <laughs> yeah, Lyman Montgomery Success Network is real simple. It is a network of professionals such as yourself and others that believe in our philosophy of what it is that we do, and they say maybe they don't have the infrastructure to start their own business, okay? And so we go out, we find the business, and if there's a match between 
For example, I have a consultant who deals in uh, web design, okay? Uh, uh, Al, for example, he's a master when it comes to SEO, uh, search engine optimization when it comes to web design. He did my website, it makes sure it's functional. And so if a client says, you know, we're looking at uh, some web issues, some IT issues, then I have Al and I have others that can go in a real simple, easy to understand, take all of the uh, alphabet soup out of it and just, because most of the people we deal with, you know, they don't know the difference between SEO, optimization, all, that. all they know is I want my website to work. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> At a, you know, a superficial level. But I don't know the bells and whistles of how a website works, but um, I just get on there, it works. Mm -hmm. and so, but I have people in the background that have the expertise, the IT expertise, they can do that. Uh, a person may say, Mark, you know, man, you see all over the place, you know, you Google Lyman Garmin Success Network or my name, I'm all over the place. And that's because I have a marketing component, a marketing company that handles all of that. And it's interesting that my marketing component is not in Ohio, it's in Alabama. Wow. But she does such a great job of promoting what we do, marketing our services, and uh, and we've been working together for three years, and I tell you this, I learned early on, focus on what I do best and outsource the rest. I love that. And that's that. what I tell a young business owner, it's worth the money to focus on what you do best and outsource the rest, or you will burn up and <laughs> burn out. I love that. That's just so true. That's just so true. Mm -hmm. My next, my next question is: um, Do you have any speaking engagements coming up, or anything um, else you have going on? Yeah, I have a number of engagements. We're still, you know, solidifying the dates. I don't want to put them out there. Uh, my marketing person just contacted me. Actually, sent me a text before we went live on there, uh, telling me that there was another opportunity to do another uh, interview with um, this radio show. I was on there a couple of weeks ago. Love what we had to say, and uh, they want to invite us back. And so there's a number of things that's in the works that I'm excited about. A couple of big conferences we're working on, uh, but we don't have the date solidified. One of the things that we on purpose made an effort, a conscious effort to do in November was to shut everything down for the most part and focus on our infrastructure. We do that every year from November, you know, from November to December and even part of January. We say, what do we want the company to look like in the next year? We look at our successes, we look at our benchmarks, we look at, okay, where do we not um, meet our goal expected, and why? And we focus in on why we did not or why we did meet a certain goal. And we go back and we bam some things. We can ready to redo the website, uh, change a couple of things. Not a lot of things, but just make it a little bit more functional. Uh, and also, we're changing uh, some of our uh, presentations to make them more relevant. Uh, when you've been in a speaking business for over 20 years, you know, you have those speeches, man, that mm -hmm. you know, you've been carrying around for 15, 20 years. But now it's time to go back in and say, you know what? Some of the points are still relevant, but let's face it, most folks I had once that talked about EMC Hammer. Let's right. face it, most of the young kids, they don't know who EMC Hammer is. Right, outside of being you, younger than us, no, they don't know a thing about it either. <laughs> you know, and, and so many of them Rick Ross or something, and I don't know. Right, right, right. You know, so, and, and so that's <laughs> part of having a good team to re-look at all of the things that we've done in the past and say, let, how do we make it better? And how do we better position Lionel Montgomery Success Network, position the book, position your coach, and all this other stuff that it ties together nicely and there's not a misstep along the way. Okay. So we we got a lot of things coming up, um, primarily in second quarter. Uh, first quarter, we just, again, focusing on infrastructure Second quarter is when we're really going to see us really hitting it hard and heavy. You're going to see a lot of print media. We're working on some television stuff. But I'm excited about where the company is positioned for second quarter of this year. Well, if you have anything going on, let me know and I'll put it on my website. That's, that's oh, okay. And I appreciate it. And, I also, appreciate it. and also, this uh, your website will be linked to mine as well. So. Hey, that's great. 
So let me just say something that I just found out, mm -hmm. uh, and I learned this a couple of weeks ago. How important backlinks are to the success of your website, or having those backlinks, and also understanding mega tags and and all that stuff. Again, this is stuff that I didn't know. But sitting down with your team and they explain this stuff, so I asked Al, I said, Al, how is it that we're blowing up, man, that people are contacting us? And he's telling me that it's because we're putting code on the website, we're doing backlinks, we've got to we, we, we read in some of the mega tags, we're making sure that people can find you. And I said, oh, okay. And, he, you know, this is part of, you know, he called it FDO. I said, what's FDO? I know what a CEO <laughs> is, but that's certain opposition. <laughs> right. you know, don't worry about it. I mean, people can find you. I said, okay, thanks. And, and I wouldn't have known that. If I had tried to go out and do this on my own, man, I probably would be on page 100 of Google or something. Right. right? <laughs> Google, uh, and others. Mm, sounds like well, sounds like you're having a pretty good time and doing having success along the way, and it almost seems like. And I'm just gonna go on a limb and just say this: out of all that you've been through, after all that you've learned, it seems like you're doing a lot of giving back. You which have, is, you have to. One of the things that I learned in life, uh, one of my personal Mentor, even though I've never met this person, I listen to this person at least twice a month, not Les Brown. Mm -hmm. And Les Brown said something real interesting. He said, number one, no one gets out of life alive, okay? And you want to die empty. You want to die not sliding down a mountain, but looking at the next mountain to come. It's another thing that Les Brown said that I often end all my speeches with this. Les Brown said, when life knocks you, Make sure you land on your back. Because, baby, if you can look <laughs> up, then you can get up. And mm -hmm. I believe in that. That, you know, when life knocks you down, man, I'm going to land on my back. Because if I can look up, then I know I can get up. And the fight ain't over until the bell sounds. Huh. Not just a lot of fighters. See, I'm a huge fan of Les Brown, too. So, <laughs> so that's really cool. I love it. I love it. I mean, think about this. You know, the other day I was... Some of this old stuff, you know, he didn't got a metal out now. But you know, this was back in 19, like 87, 88. Mm -hmm. And Les Brown said, you know, you got to be hungry, man. Another friend of mine, Mark Anthony Garrett, out of Columbus, Ohio, he put it this way. He said, you ever know this only hungry dogs hunt? Mm -hmm. If you got a dog, a little lap dog, and you know it's going to be fed five times a day, that thing ain't going to hunt nothing. It won't even protect the house. Mm -hmm. But you just want them old junkyard dogs, the dog you don't know when it's going to eat that. That's the dog you want to have as a guard dog. That's yep. the dog you want to take hunting. And I still have that tenacity, that fortitude, that I'm not too satisfied. Regardless of my success, man, I still keep room to stay home because I understand how easy it is to lose. And I never take my successes for granted. I thank God every day for the successes that I have, but I believe I am blessed to be a blessing to help someone else as many helped me along the way. Because I could not have gotten to this point in my life by myself. And if anyone thinks he or she can do it by themselves, man, they just set themselves up for a huge failure. Because trust me, it takes a team to make you successful. Wow, uh, well, you're making my last question kind of hard. <laughs> and the reason why, why, reason why you're making it kind of hard is because I'll just put it out there. My next question is, uh, do you have any final words of wisdom? But it seems like we've been giving this, you, you've been giving words of wisdom the whole time. But <laughs> the thing that I would say is this. What helped me overcome my tragedies of life is what I call reflection. And in the book, I talk about reflection. And most of us think of reflection from the concept of just looking back. But really, reflection is directional. And I often will say this to young people when they're going through and then they're trying to find out who they are in life and who they are, who are they connected with. I say you need to spend time in meditation and reflection. We look up to our creator from which all life flows through us and from us. We look to the left of those who influence us. We look to the right of those whom we influence. We look back at our past and think, thank God we look forward to success and my future is brighter than my past will ever be. So baby, keep looking forward and embrace this journey. 
because the journey is great and don't give up and don't stop and you will get to your destination. That's the key, man, don't stop. You know, one person said, Mr. Montgomery, I'm having a tough day. You know, I've been in college for five years and everyone else graduated a year ago. I said, so what? Keep on the course and you will graduate. Yes. Don't worry. Uh, E.T., man, Eric Thomas, it took him 12 years to get a four-year degree. Mm-hmm. He kept going to graduate, had the graduation, and all his buddies. But guess what? Now he's working with his Ph.D. And so don't get caught up on how long it takes. Just keep doing the things that you need to do to be successful, and success will come. I guarantee you. That's it. And also, now, how can we get in contact with you? Sure. Uh, real easy. You can go to my website, www.lymontgomery.com. You can email me at lmontgomery at lymontgomery.com. You can contact us. Uh, you just Google my name. I mean, all my stuff is out there. I, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Skype. Uh, I'm on Skype, lyman.montgomery, L-Y-M-A-N. Uh, if you go to... Uh, Facebook, I'm on there, just just put my name in there, Lyman Montgomery uh, or Shattered Mass, I'm on there, I'm easy to find. You know, I'm one of those persons, man, you can actually find out where I'm at. (laughs) I love it, I love it, I love it. Well, I want to thank you. I learned a lot from that brother, and despite all the technical issues, we still was able to get out a good conversation. Uh, There'll be more coming from him, just stand by. But for now, we'll be back. Coming soon to the author's corner, I'm having a special black comic book edition. We'll talk to Mama's Boy's creator, Jerry Kraft. We'll follow up with Early Huff and her special guest, Superhero Huff herself. Then, we'll wrap it up with Time Like Toon's very own, Yul Tobert. It's the day of the comic books, coming in March, on the author's corner with H.D. Campbell. Looking for commentary on the hardest hitting issues? Looking for someone who don't pull any punches? Looking for a debatable topic on a wide range of subjects? Check out DJ Triple's column in which she gives you her powerful opinion, no holds barred. Get to know DJ Triplet on my AC Insider page at www.htcamel3.net. And as always, let your writing fuel your spirit. Have you checked out the new AC Camel Productions website lately? It has new interactive features. More information on books, services, shows, and more. Check out videos, slideshows, and more at www.htcampbell3.net. And as always, let your writing fuel your spirit. Welcome back to the Office Corner with H.D. Campbell. Welcome back. My last author is another deep brother with another story to tell. And boy, his is a deep one too. So without further ado, here's Tremaine Moore. My first question. All right, this is a big question. You're an author and you're a publisher. So first tell me what got you started in writing in the first place. Well, writing for me was very therapeutic. I hated English in school, but when it came to free writing, I was real good at it. In fact, when I was 12 years old, I was a rapper in high school. But when you fall in love in high school and you're trying to get close to a honey, Next thing you know, you're writing a poem, and actually a classmate introduced me to poetry because she she was a poet writer and I was a rapper, and she took this one song that I had and she twisted it to a poem. And this was at the turn of 1990 when rap was getting a little bit violent, Mm -hmm. so I kind of backed away from it because that wasn't my style. And the girl who I gave the poem to loved it, and I started writing poems. And as a result, I just continued writing from that point. Cool, cool. So what made you want to uh, start publishing your work? The funny thing is I never intended on publishing any of my three poetry books. I was just writing and then one of my friends got a hold of a poem and she forwarded it to a publisher and the rest was pretty much history. That's how it always is. You already have some meddling third party to get it. To. <laughs> exactly. So, so basically, so basically, I basically I can speak from the same experience. <laughs> so, so trust me, I understand. I understand. So, uh, how long have you been writing? 
truthfully, truthfully, I've been writing my poetry since. Okay, and what was the brainchild behind that? Well, the brainchild was actually through a friend when I was about to release my first book, and she recommended me go into self-publishing, so that kind of gave me the idea of starting my own publishing company. Okay, okay. And, um, and how many people have you uh, serviced so far? Besides so far, your I'm working on two to three clients right at the moment. Um, of course, you know, in a tight economy, there are a couple of financial things going on. So I'm being patient with them, you know, because being the accountant that I am, I want to make sure that they have their money together so they can go ahead and have the finances available so they can go ahead and release their projects. I truly understand. I truly understand. Uh, and how long has it been in operation? It's been in operation since May of 2008. Cool. Cool. Okay. So, um... Do you, so, 
Well, you have the books. Uh, do you have any books coming out soon or? Yes. The next book due out in August is, it's kind of like an anthology and work is focusing on domestic violence in the faith community. It will be written by myself, two fellow authors, Andrea Davis and Tamika Sims. Okay. Okay. Also, too, um, this book is uh, about domestic violence. Do you have uh, any connection or know of anyone that's been in? Considering the story is three stories, uh, Tamika survived domestic violence, Andrea survived emotional abuse, and I knew a, a friend of mine who went through domestic violence, and she went back to her boyfriend. Actually, I wrote a poem on that in my very first book, and I'm just extending that poem into a short story for the for the domestic violence story. Okay, okay. Now my next question, do you have any events coming up to promote either your upcoming titles or your past titles? My past titles, on March the 2nd, I'll be at the Augusta Literary Festival. In fact, I'll be speaking on Deaf, Dumb, Blind, and Stupid. And the next pro uh, event will be in August the 3rd. That will be the official kickoff of the Domestic Violence Book. Okay. Also, too, uh, you let me know about that, and I'll uh, put something on my website as well about that. I'll do that. All right. I'll do that. All right. But I don't forget. All right. Where do, uh, where do your fans contact you? My friends can contact me in multiple ways. They can contact me through my website at www.maintree.com. They can contact me on Facebook, which is facebook.com backslash author Tremaine Moore. They can contact me on Twitter at M-A-Y-N-T-R-E. And they can get in contact with me on my blog which is Maine, M-A-Y-N-E, -E, man, dot blogspot, dot com. Okay. And my email address is Tremaine, T-R-E-M-A-Y-N-E, -E, underscore more, with two O's, at yahoo.com. Sweet, sweet. Thank you, thank you. Um, do you now, um, I know you have a book coming out here soon, but do you have any other future projects that are in the works? Uh, there is a possible collaboration poetry book where me and a friend of mine, we actually write poems on Facebook, but I'm trying to get her solo project out first before releasing the collaboration poetry book out. Okay. I'm going to ask you this question and, um, and also, and also put all the, all off the side to be on the spot with this. Um, because you, you, you not only are, you not only are a good author in your own right, you, um, you help out a lot of authors. So um, my next, so my last question for you is: Do you have any, do you have any words for anybody who wants to start a writing career or be in your position? I tell people all the time: get a journal, either get a voice recorder, and just start writing. And thoughts are free, ideas are free. Just start writing whatever whatever is put on your heart, your mind, your spirit. Just start writing and just go for it. Just go for it. I mean, that's advice all writers need to hear. Instead of just worrying about how it's going to look, what it's going to do, just write. So, man, kudos, brother. But when I come back, I'll have a final word. So you believe the Bruce Williams story concluded in How to Lose a Black Woman? Well, Bruce Williams begs to differ. Find out what's been going on with Bruce Williams in the sequel titled Geraldine, coming soon. Have you checked out the Authors Corner lately? It's the best show you're not watching. Every two weeks, we bring you author interviews, news, and the best of the industry. With special guests, it's no wonder the fastest growing show around. There are two ways to check me out. Log on to my website at www.hdcampbell3.net on my YouTube channel at H.D. Campbell 1230. And as always, let your writing fuel your spirit. Coming soon to the office corner, I'm having a special black comic book edition. We'll talk to Mama's Boy's creator, Jerry Kraft. We'll follow up with Yearly Huff and her special guest, Superhero Huff herself. Then, we'll wrap it up with Time Like Toon's very own Yule Tobert. 
Just the day of the comic books coming in March on the Office Corner with H.D. Campbell. Welcome back. I want to thank everyone who watched the show and make the show possible because without you, there is no show. I also want to take a moment to tell you about a new segment I'm working on next time. It's going to be my new commentary segment. It's just like the columns I do with me, Sharita Newsom, and DJ Triple are all right, except I'll be doing them on the show, and they'll mainly be about writing or industry uh, topics, pretty much. Um, but for now, I do want to leave with this piece of advice. No writer or author is an island, and we cannot get to where we are without our fans. So please, by all means, as we elevate, stay humble. If you have a Facebook page, make it accessible to them. And finally, by all means, no matter how busy you are, please stay connected to them. If they inbox you, inbox them back. If they message you, message you back. If you have an email, please answer that email. They're the ones who make us and break us. And they can stop buying your books at any time, so please stay connected to your fans. And legitimately love your fans, because your fans do love you. Now, before I say goodbye, I want to give one more shout out to Makesha Dorsey and the Dorsey Group for their assistance in helping me with today's show guest. Well, that's the office corner with H.C. Campbell. Thank you all once again from the bottom of my heart. I love you all. And as always, let your writing fuel your spirit, and God bless. Thank you for watching The Author's Corner with H.D. Campbell. See you in a couple of weeks when we profile three new authors. And as always, let your writing fuel your spirit.